thing, and I asked her. And she smiled and reached down into the bottom drawer of her desk and pulled out a bound research report called UKBC and Female Founders that her bank had published. And this was, had been commissioned by the UK government. They looked at every single venture capital deal in the UK in 2017 and looked at the gender makeup of the investments that were made. And what they found was quite frankly shocking. In 2017, all female teams submitted 5% of all pitch decks to venture capital firms. And they got less than 1% of the money. 5% of the decks, less than 1% of the money. Mixed gender teams submitted 20% of the decks and got 10% of the money. Better than all female, but still not really fair. And for those of you who are good at maths, or for those of you who aren't good at maths, all male teams submitted 75% of the pitch decks, and they got 89% of the money. So there is a very clear bias toward women. And I started looking into this more and researching it more, and I discovered that it was a global issue. It's the same kind of story in the United States, it's the same kind of story on the continent, it's the same kind of story in India, it's the same, or even worse, in Southeast Asia. It's the same in Australia. And so in November of 2019, I put on an event at the London Stock Exchange. And we had over 100 people come in on the day and share their stories and, and tell, share with the community. We had four entrepreneurs tell their stories of fundraising. We had three investors tell their perspective on what the issue was. And we had all sorts of amazing plans. In fact, we had awesome plans for what we were going to do in 2020. But then a little virus changed our plans. And so we didn't do any events. And then I was talking with my team in the summer and we said, let's do an event online. Everybody's going online. Let's do an event online. So we decided, okay, we'll run an event online. And we started just marketing it through LinkedIn and emails and all that. We had 150 people attend online from San Francisco to the Philippines, from Lithuania to Cape Town. 150 people from around the world. We've since run five events online, and last week we ran a live hybrid event live from the London Stock Exchange, and I'll come on to that in a moment. But I just want to step back and I want to talk about what led to this inspiration, what led to me being on this journey. Why is a man fighting the case for female entrepreneurs? And some people ask me that question in quite an aggressive way. Uh, in fact, when we were announcing our recent event, I had several people on LinkedIn come back to me with questions like, you men get off the stage, to get off the stage, let the women do these events. And, you know, but that's okay, I, you know, I, I can understand the anger. But I don't let the anger hold me back. I, I try and channel it, and I try and connect with and communicate with these women who have these views. But coming back, in 1969, I was seven years old. And I told my mom one day that I loved chocolate chip cookies, and I wanted more. And so my mom taught me how to make chocolate chip cookies. And when I was 15, in 1977, I had my first girlfriend. And I said to my mom, I think I look smarter wearing shirts that have been ironed. So my mom said, I'll teach you how to iron shirts. Now this is the 60s and 70s. Those were women's jobs. But for my mom, that was just part of growing up. And, and so I learned about gender equality at a very young age, and I'm so grateful to my mom, who's still alive, she's 93 years old now. I was on the phone with her earlier today, and she's an inspiration to me. My mom taught me about gender equality at a young age, and that was so cool. My wife and I met when we were 17. I'm 59 now, so we've been together a while. And we have two grown-up daughters, they're 29 and 31. 
So all of my adult life, I've lived in an environment where I was actually a minority. And so the lessons I learned at an early age about gender equality from my mom were applied in my adult life, in my family life at home with my wife and, my two, and our, our two daughters. And that led to a foundation within me that at the time I didn't really understand was there. And the piece I want to pick up on about inspiration is this. I have known all of my adult life, I've known deep within my gut that I'm here for a reason. But for most of my adult life, I didn't know what that reason was. And I always wanted to make a noise about it. I always wanted to make a ruckus about it. I always wanted to do something about it. to invest in female founders. And since September, John and I have been working to launch a fund. And we announced this last Thursday at the London Stock Exchange. Now, there are regulatory constraints around what I am and am not allowed to say, but we have now put out a public announcement on the Stock Exchange's regulatory news web uh, page announcing the creation of a new business called the Funding Focus Investment Trust PLC and that we are actively in the process of getting approval from the Financial Conduct Authority and raising money from investors to launch a fund that will invest in female founders. 
Three years ago, I could not have possibly imagined this. But here I am today, and with a good, fair wind, by the end of May, our fund will be live, listed on the stock exchange. We will have 100 million pounds in the bank, and we will start investing in companies backed by female founders. And I know, deep in my gut, that this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I welcome any questions that anybody has.